Welcome to Women World Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Julie Harwick. Thank you for joining me today as we celebrate God's grace in our lives, in this ministry, and around the world. I have lived a somewhat charmed life. I say that because God has given me a relatively easy path to walk so far. I have never experienced poverty or homelessness. I don't come from a broken or abusive home. My children have no ongoing health problems and have all become successful adults. My husband and I have been happily married for almost 40 years, and the only real losses I have experienced are an extended list of pets and my reasonably elderly grandparents. These things are all incredible blessings that God has poured out on me, but there's part of me that's waiting for the other shoe to drop. Deep down, I know this relatively trouble-free existence can't continue forever. Of course, I've had the daily and sometimes heavier struggles that we all deal with. Potential health problems, relational issues, times when money was tight or jobs were difficult. Through them all, God was beside me and intervened on my behalf, and I know that the same will be true for the bigger things. But I've never been tested that way. I'll never forget the Christmas day when I looked out my window and saw my neighbor, who had very unexpectedly lost her husband the previous September. She had collapsed on the sidewalk in the midst of walking her dogs. I ran to her to make sure she wasn't physically hurt, and as I suspected, it wasn't physical pain that had taken her down. Her sobs tore at my heart as she tried to apologize for making a scene. I reassured her that she had every right to collapse on the sidewalk in tears and that no one would judge her. I felt completely helpless to do anything but sit with my arm around her and tell her that I couldn't even comprehend the pain and loss she must be feeling, but I would stay with her while she cried and she could take as long as she needed. We sat there for quite a while. She cried, and I prayed, and I also thought about what it would be like if our roles were reversed. How would I deal with that kind of unimaginable loss? Not too long after that, I had sort of a trial run. My husband and I were helping out with our church's youth group at a conference in Daytona Beach. We had just arrived at the hotel and helped to unload the luggage and equipment in the hot summer sun. It was well past lunchtime, and since the two of us weren't needed until evening, we went to lunch. We had a great meal, and John was signing the check when he slumped over it. He'd seemed perfectly normal up to this point, so I assumed he was joking around about the total causing him to pass out. When I asked him what he was doing, he didn't respond and it became clear that something was very wrong. I moved to sit beside him and tried to get a response. The waitress approached just then and immediately offered to call 911. As I put my arm around him and called his name, he came too. I explained that he had passed out and asked him what was wrong. He insisted that he was fine and had not passed out, and then he slumped over the check again. This began a ridiculous cycle of him going in and out of consciousness and insisting that he was perfectly fine and had not passed out every time he regained consciousness. Somehow, God allowed me to see the humor in that in spite of the incredible fear I was experiencing. Fortunately, the fire department arrived within minutes. His blood pressure was very low, which probably accounted for his loss of consciousness. He was able to answer their questions and managed to stay conscious from that point on. It was all very surreal watching them load him into the back of the ambulance, as if I was watching someone else have this experience. 
The paramedic suggested that I drive straight to the hospital since they were likely to get there faster, even if I left before they did. On the drive there, I prayed as if his life depended on it. He had experienced two other hospitalizations due to heart issues. They were resolved with a couple of medications, but I immediately started wondering if the heart issues had become more serious. I allowed myself to consider briefly that I might have just seen him alive for the last time. I couldn't really believe that was the case, but I asked God to enable me to deal with anything that might happen. The hospital's ER was fairly chaotic because COVID was raging at that time. When I asked if he had arrived there yet, I was told that he hadn't. I waited for what seemed like an eternity and checked again. He wasn't in the system. I tried texting him. I knew he had his phone, but he didn't answer. Maybe they wouldn't let him use it, or maybe he couldn't. Had he had a heart attack in the back of the ambulance, causing them to take him to a closer hospital? Had I or the paramedics misunderstood where they were taking him? I googled the other hospital in the area and called to see if he was in their ER. They had no one by that name. I went out in the parking lot looking for signs of his ambulance, but found nothing. While I waited, I contacted my parents and others who were helping with the conference. I knew they would be praying too. After multiple trips to the information desk to see if he'd been checked in, someone took pity on me and went looking for him herself. A relief like nothing I'd ever experienced before came over me when she returned with the news that he was there. He just hadn't been entered into the system yet. She gave me a pass and I was able to go to him. After three days and many tests, he was released with a relatively clean bill of health. The loss of consciousness was attributed to dehydration when everything else had been ruled out. I couldn't have been more grateful for this outcome. I'm not normally an anxious person, but this experience and a few others like it have given me a taste of what it's like to have your heart pounding and your mind racing from one horrible scenario to another. Many of the people closest to me deal with these symptoms to one degree or another on a regular basis. Anxiety is growing at an alarming rate. The American Psychiatric Association's 2024 Mental Health Poll revealed that 43% of American adults say they feel more anxious than they did the previous year, when that number was 37%. It was just 32% in 2022. 70% of adults are particularly anxious about current events, 77% the economy, and 73% are worried about the November election. Sadly, among young adults aged 18 to 24, roughly half say they regularly experience feelings of anxiety. This isn't a new problem, although growing technological advances and the complications that come with them may be causing anxiety to be more pervasive in our culture. But as Christian author Max Lucado explains, we don't have to succumb to it. Don't let anything in life leave you perpetually breathless and in angst, he cautions, adding, the presence of anxiety is unavoidable but the prison of anxiety is optional. Scripture has a lot to say on this topic, which is a pretty good indication that God knew it was something with which we would struggle. In Philippians 4, 6, we're told, Be anxious for nothing, but in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In other words, the standard to aim for is to resist anxiety. And in saying, but in every situation, I think Paul is acknowledging that we often find ourselves in situations where anxiety is the natural response. So what are we to do with that anxiety? He offers a three-step antidote to feelings of anxiety. Number one, pray, which is nothing more than just communicating with God. This might be the time to tell God how you're feeling. Obviously, he already knows, but admitting and verbalizing your feelings is a needed release for you. Once you've done that, 
Step two is petition. Now is the time to ask him to intervene in the situation and relieve your anxiety. The last component, which is so easy to overlook, is thanksgiving. Why is that important? Because it causes you to remember what he has already done on your behalf. It reminds you of the power and love he has already demonstrated in your life and encourages you to trust him no matter what you're dealing with right now. God gave us a perfect example of how this works in the Old Testament story of Hezekiah. I've mentioned it in other podcasts because it's one of my favorites. 2 Kings 19 describes how a messenger from Assyria brought a threatening letter from its king, demanding that Hezekiah surrender the nation of Israel to him. Everyone knew that the Assyrians had conquered every nation they had attacked, and that Israel was certain to suffer the same fate. As Israel's king, Hezekiah did the only thing he knew to do. He took the letter to the temple and spread it out before the Lord, effectively laying all his cards on the table. In prayer, he enumerated the dire circumstances that currently face the nation of Israel. He petitioned the Lord to deliver us from his hands, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. He altered the Philippians 4-6 order by beginning his meeting with God with the recognition of his power and sovereignty, saying, O Lord God of Israel, sitting on your throne high above the angels, you alone are the God of all the kingdoms of the earth. That very night, the angel of the Lord killed 185,000 Assyrian troops, causing them to abandon their campaign against Israel. Jesus himself had a lot to say about anxiety. He spent much of Matthew chapter 6 on the subject, noting how frequently people worried about the basic necessities of life. He pointed out how birds and wildflowers don't worry about what they'll eat or how they'll dress themselves because God takes care of them. And that if God cares about birds and flowers, how much more does he care for us? He summed it up by saying, Your Heavenly Father already knows what you need and will give it to you if you give Him first place in your life and live as He wants you to. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow, too. Live one day at a time. If you are someone who regularly struggles with feelings of anxiety, you may be thinking, Yes, I already know all those verses, and I've tried to do that but I'm still riddled with anxiety. As with so many biblical principles, this is a simple one, but not easy. I read an online account of a young woman who battled anxiety from as far back as she can remember. She grew up in a Christian home and studied all the scriptures relating to anxiety, but could find no relief. I thought anxiety was a failure of my faith, she explained, But it turns out, it was pushing me into a deeper reliance on God. It was teaching me the truth of God's words. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This weakness gives me the daily opportunity to experience the grace and power of God and to grow closer to God. Philippians 4.6 has become an important key to dealing with anxiety for her as well. Where she once felt condemned by the phrase, be anxious for nothing, she began to realize that rather than condemnation, it offered instructions for dealing with anxiety. A pastor's message opened her eyes to the importance of prayer in dealing with her anxious thoughts. He explained, when you're done praying, you'll be done worrying. If you're not done worrying, then you're not done praying. As this young woman has learned to communicate with God about everything all the time, she's experienced more peace. She's also benefited from counseling, but by viewing her struggle as something that God is using to draw her closer to Him, rather than an indication of spiritual failure, she's experiencing small victories and a deeper knowledge of God. 
If you're struggling with anxiety on a regular basis or just occasionally, I hope you'll use it as an opportunity to grow your faith. Let God prove to you the truth of His Word. Hebrews 13.8 challenges us to test His faithfulness through prayer. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There, we will receive His mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Thanks for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each week as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without written consent. Thank you.